In this video, I'm going to walk through over 30 of my favorite Mac getting started tips. So this can be handy if you purchased a brand new Mac or if you've just reinstalled Mac OS. These are my favorite tips. And even if you're a seasoned Mac user, chances are there'll probably be a few of these tips in here that are gonna be helpful for you as well. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. But first, a word from our sponsor. 9to5Mac is sponsored by AirBuddy 2, a must-have utility for AirPods users. The original version was great, but AirBuddy 2 comes with tons of new incredible features. It extends macOS to improve your AirPods experience, and it's fully compatible with Big Sur and Apple Silicon. Just open your charging case next to your Mac to see a beautiful UI with info on batteries, connection, and status. With AirBuddy 2, you can connect and change listening modes at the same time with a single trackpad gesture. Automate system volume, audio input and listening mode so you're ready to go into a video call with just a single click and you can enjoy custom global keyboard shortcuts that allow you to quickly connect to disconnect from or change listening modes on your devices go to airbuddy.app slash 9 to 5 mac to learn more the first 100 9 to 5 mac viewers to use that url will get airbuddy with a 20 percent discount and stay tuned to the end of this video to learn about even more things that airbuddy 2 can do for you Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. The very first thing I do when setting up a new Mac is to change the tracking speed. As you can see here, it is super slow by default, set to level four, and it takes several swipes to swipe across the screen, right? So you wanna go to system preferences, go to trackpad, and then adjust the tracking speed. You can see it's on level four by default. So what I do is I just drag that slider almost all the way to the right, second to the last position. That gives you much faster tracking speed so you can quickly get to where you need to go on Mac OS. So that is a must do, the first thing that I always do when setting up a new Mac. The next thing I do is enable tap to click for the trackpad. So by default, tap to click is disabled. So when I tap on the trackpad, nothing happens. If I want to initiate a click, I actually have to physically press on the trackpad like that. But with tap to click enabled, I don't have to physically press. I just simply tap, just like that. So this sort of mimics how we, we're used to tapping on things with our smartphones, with our iPads. You don't have to physically press on the screen, you just simply tap and we can mimic that action here on the Mac. Now when you wanna drag a window or any other item around on your Mac, what you would normally have to do is click and drag, it's just like this. But is there a way to drag a window or other item without physically clicking on the trackpad? Well, yes, there is. You just wanna to go to system preferences and then go to accessibility. And under accessibility, you wanna scroll down until you see pointer control. Click on pointer control, and there you'll see where it says trackpad options. Click that, and then click enable dragging, and then click the drop down box and select three finger drag, and then click okay. So now when you use three fingers on your trackpad, look what happens. You can drag without actually physically clicking on the trackpad, which is super nice and it goes along well with tap to click functionality. So you're not clicking nearly as much on your trackpad as you would without these options enabled. Now, even if you're using something like a MacBook Pro with the built-in trackpad, you may prefer to use a mouse depending on your personal preferences. But you'll notice tracking is slow with the mouse when setting up your Mac as well. So you wanna go to system preferences, click on mouse, and then adjust the tracking speed just like we did for the trackpad. And that makes moving your mouse around much more efficient on your Mac. And if you use a mouse, you definitely wanna enable the secondary click functionality, AKA right click on your mouse, because otherwise, if you wanted to input a right click, you actually have to hold the control key on your keyboard and then click on your mouse. But if you enable the secondary click within system preferences mouse, right here, just click that. Then you can simply click on the right side of your mouse to use the secondary click. That is a must change when setting up your Mac. If you use a magic mouse, open up system preferences, mouse, and then click more gestures. There you'll see swipe between pages. Now I'm gonna show you why this is useful. Normally when browsing something like Safari, if you wanted to go back or forward, you would have to use the back or forward buttons or use a keyboard shortcut. 
but your magic mouse is actually capable of using swipe gestures to navigate Safari, to go back and forward. So let's go back to our system preferences. Let's enable swipe between pages. And now you can see I'm just simply swiping with a finger on my magic mouse to go back and to go forward just like that. In my opinion, this is a must if you're a Magic Mouse user. If you're an Apple Watch user, then Apple Watch Unlock is a must configure when setting up your Mac. So open up System Preferences, click on Security and Privacy, and then click where it says use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac. So I'm going to put in my system password there, click Modify Settings. So there we go. So it's turning on. And once configured, I can click this little lock to unlock and approve that unlock using my Apple Watch. Just two clicks of the side button, it unlocks this section of system preferences. And of course, you can also use the Apple Watch to unlock your Mac at the lock screen, which is super handy. And for that reason, it's a must configure feature when setting up your new Mac. Another must have for new Mac users is enabling hot corners. Hot corners allows you to launch certain actions just by placing your cursor in one of the four corners of the display. So let me show you how to set it up. Go to System Preferences, click on Mission Control, and then click Hot Corners in the bottom left-hand corner. Now you're gonna see four different active screen corners that you can configure, and we're gonna configure all four of them. So the first one I like to set up is in the bottom left-hand corner, and I like to set that to Show Desktop. So you can just select Desktop there. The next one I like to set up is Launchpad and I like to put that in the upper left-hand corner. And the third one I like to set up is Mission Control, so I like to put that in the upper right-hand corner. And then lastly, I like to put in the bottom right-hand corner, put Display to Sleep, so that it just makes the screen go black. So that's how I like to set up my hot corners. Of course, you can set yours up however you want to, but these are the ways I like to do mine. So click OK, and now I'm gonna showcase these hot corners for you. So, bottom left-hand corner, that's gonna show the desktop just like that. So anytime I wanna just get right back to the desktop, maybe I have a whole lot of app icons on the screen, I wanna see something on the desktop, that's super handy, it allows me to drag stuff from the desktop to another app with ease. Now the next hot corner that I configured is Launchpad in the upper left hand corner. And I like this because that just quickly shows me all the applications on my Mac. Yes, it's probably not as efficient as just launching an app with Spotlight, but I like that. Now in the upper right hand corner, I set Mission Control. So that allows me to view all of my app windows. I don't have a lot of apps running right now, but that also allows me to create additional desktops, to move desktops around, to move apps between desktops, etc. And I just use a handy two finger swipe on my trusty magic mouse to move between those two desktops. So just a really nice way to enable mission control directly from the hot corner. So the last corner that I use here is in the bottom right hand corner and that allows me to put my Mac display to sleep. And that's super handy whenever I just wanna turn the screen off, make it black, but still keep my Mac running in the background. So it's not actually putting the Mac to sleep, it's just putting the display to sleep. That's super handy. So that's the way I like to configure my four hot corners, but again, you can set them up just like you wish. Now out of the box, Mac OS's keyboard navigation is a bit limited, but we can fix this by going to System Preferences, Keyboard, clicking on Shortcuts, and then clicking the little box that says use keyboard navigation to move focus between controls. So before we do that, let me just show you what it's like when I try to tap through all the various controls right here in System Preferences Keyboard. So I'm going to use my tab key on my keyboard and just cycle through the various controls. So press tab, press tab again, press tab again, <laughs> And you're really not seeing the ability to cycle through that many controls. It's fairly limited, as you can see there. So you're missing like the restore defaults button, the setup Bluetooth keyboard button at the bottom, the little checkbox, lots of things you're missing. But let's go ahead and enable the use keyboard navigation to move focus between controls. And now let's press our tab key on our keyboard. And you're gonna see that you get way more control options when you're tabbing through. So. Notice I'm getting on restore defaults, getting on the button below, get, see everything I'm able to tap through to navigate on Mac OS using my keyboard. So this is 
super handy. And honestly, it's more efficient to navigate through certain screens with just your keyboard instead of using your mouse. Now, when setting up my Mac, I like to update my computer name to something more recognizable. So right now, I mean, yeah, it says Jeff's Mac Mini. That's pretty recognizable, right? But I like to be a little bit more descriptive because sometimes I have multiple Macs on the same network and it just makes it easier to, to you know, quickly identify mentally. So if I press return after renaming the computer, now, whenever that shows up on the network, it will be called M1 Mac Mini. So if I'm airdropping something, I'm no longer airdropping to Jeff's Mac Mini, I'm airdropping to the newly renamed M1 Mac Mini. The new control center in Mac OS Big Sur is cool and all, but I still like to be able to quickly access my volume controls right from the menu bar with minimal clicks. So right now you have to open up control center and then you have to click on sound and then you can access your sound details there. Of course, you can adjust the sound right from control center, but if you want to change outputs, either input or output, you have to click again like this. So here's how we can fix that issue. You wanna click and open up control center and simply drag the sound module up to the menu bar like that. And now we have a quickly accessible sound button right in the menu bar. And if I hold option while clicking, I can access input settings along with my output settings. Now Spotlight has been a staple in the menu bar for years on the Mac, but it's just not really necessary because we have keyboard shortcuts. You hold command, press space, and then you access Spotlight that way. Plus I don't even use Spotlight, I use Alfred. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Hold the command key on your keyboard while clicking and dragging out the Spotlight icon from the menu bar and release just like that. All right, so let's talk about Finder, specifically what happens when you open up a new Finder window and what is displayed by default. So we go to Finder Preferences. Under the General tab here, you'll see at near the bottom of the General tab, New Finder Windows Show. By default, it shows Recents when opening up a new Finder window. I don't particularly like that. I just want a desktop window. So I change that to new finder windows show desktop. So I'm gonna open up a new window, command N, and it shows a new desktop window just like that. That's what I like to do. You can configure that however you want to. Now let's talk about configuring the finder sidebar. So in finder preferences, click sidebar, and you'll see several items unchecked, like your home, pictures, music, and movies folders. So since I access those directories all the time, I make sure I enable all those on my Finder sidebar. So you can see them all appear there right under favorites. Now I also like unchecking recent tags because I generally don't use tags on my Mac. So I just uncheck that. It's one less thing to have to look at on the sidebar. And of course you can go in here and configure the sidebar however else you like to configure it. You don't have to have it just like I have it here but you do definitely want to go in and customize it to your liking. Now, one thing I do like doing is adding hard disk to the desktop. So under Finder Preferences, under General, I just click hard disk and that will display all my disk internally on my Mac. And of course, by default, external disks are displayed as well. So just keep that in mind. Now, keeping folders on top when sorting by name is an option that you can enable from Finder Preferences under the Advanced tab. So under Advanced, you're gonna see where it says Keep Folders on Top. So you can check in Windows when sorting by name and on desktop. So when I have this option enabled, you can see here within Applications, the folders are displayed first. So Utilities is gonna be displayed first when sorting by name. Motion VFX is actually a folder, it just has a different look to it. But Utilities, of course, is a folder as well, and that's displayed first. So I like this because it prevents folders from being mixed up within other items, causing those folders, which may contain very important things, to get lost in the fray. Now making searches use your current folder is another option that I like enabling when setting up my Mac. So under Finder Preferences, under Advanced, I like setting the when performing a search option using the drop down menu to search the current folder. And what that does is it basically will look for the search terms within the folder you're searching for. Sorry, the way I'm saying folder, I know people are going to have a, a conniption fit over it. But basically what this does is it will search the current folder first when performing that search. So if I just type in Apollo here, 
it's going to search the applications folder because that's the, the folder that I was in. But I can also quickly search this Mac, search the entire computer by just clicking this Mac. But by default, it searches the current folder instead of vice versa. It's yet another setting that I like enabling upon setting up a new Mac. Now, another thing I like doing is adding the user library to the sidebar in the finder. So to do that, you just want to go up to the go menu. So that's going to show you your various destinations that you can quickly get to. But if you hold the option key on your keyboard, notice what happens. See, it reveals the library destination, which is hidden by default and only revealed when holding the option key. So if you hold option, you click on library, that's going to take you to your user library folder that contains all sorts of handy, useful things like application support, where you can go in and find some of the configuration files that are related to the applications you use on your Mac. And there's also the preferences folder that contains all the various preferences for the apps you use as well. So you can tell why this would be handy to have quick access to. So to gain access to this or to add that to your sidebar in the finder, it's really easy. All you need to do is go up to the file menu and select add to sidebar while in that folder. And you can see, bam, the library folder moved directly to the sidebar for quick and easy access. Super simple, super easy. Now I also like to enable the status bar in the finder and to do that, all you need to do is go up to the view menu and select show status bar. When you do that, you see a status bar at the bottom of the finder that will tell you how many items is in a particular folder, how many items you've selected, the amount of storage available. And if you're an icon view, you can adjust the size of those icons using the slider in the bottom right hand corner of the status bar. Now taking screenshots, something I do all the time as a Mac OS user. So I'm going to use the shortcut command shift three to quickly take a screenshot. Now notice in the bottom right hand corner, you get this floating thumbnail. If you click on it, you can quickly mark up a screenshot, uh, easily share that screenshot. You can also drag that window preview directly into a desired destination for sharing. But for me personally, when I take a screenshot, I don't want a window preview. I don't want that waiting for, you know, three seconds before it appears on my desktop, which is what normally happens. I just want the screenshot to appear on the desktop as soon as I execute the command for that screenshot. So to do that, I'm going to go to the options for the screenshot and uncheck show floating thumbnail. That's going to eliminate that floating thumbnail in the bottom right hand corner. And when I take a screenshot, notice what happens. So I'm going to take my screenshot and bam, it appears immediately on the desktop, ready for me to do whatever I need to do to it. Now, another thing that I do when setting up a new Mac is to disable the screenshot shadow. Now this appears whenever taking a screenshot of a selected window using command shift four, hovering over the window and then pressing the space bar and clicking with your mouse. So I can hover over the dock, I can hover over system preferences, click my mouse, it takes a screenshot of that particular window. But notice when I preview or open that particular file, you'll see that shadow that appears around the edge of that window. And that's nice because you actually have that shadow. I mean, if you look at that system preferences window, there is a shadow going around it. But for my purposes, I don't need that shadow when I'm uploading a screenshot of a window to nine to five Mac for a tutorial or something like that. So I would like to remove that shadow. And that's what I always do with new installs of Mac OS whenever I get a new Mac. So I'm going to show you how to do that using a simple terminal command. So we're going to close out of the screenshot here, open up our text edit window. And now you'll see the command necessary to not only remove the shadow, but also to convert that screenshot to JPEG. By default, the screenshots are saved as PNG files, which is okay. But for my purposes, uploading to the web, JPEGs are going to be smaller uh, in size. So we're going to open up a terminal window in our other folder in Launchpad. And I'm going to simply paste that command in. So the first thing it's going to do is disable the shadow. The second thing it does is change the screen capture type to JPEG and then just press return on the keyboard. So now I'm going to take this screenshot again of this window 
and we're going to compare the two. So here's the new screenshot without the shadow around it. Here's the one with the shadow without with without with you get it. All right. So another thing comparing the ping file to the JPEG size wise, you're going to see a difference here. So we're going to look at this in list view on our desktop and you see it, it stands out immediately. 771 kilobytes for the screenshot with the shadow in PNG format, and then just 216 kilobytes for the screenshot without shadow in the JPEG format. Now I always have problems with keeping a tidy desktop, but if you right click on your desktop and select use stacks, that can go a long way to keeping your desktop nice and tidy. What this does is basically groups like files together in a stack and you can compress or expand the stack simply by clicking on it like that. So all my screenshots grouped together in a stack makes for a much cleaner desktop. You can also quick look the entire stack by selecting the stack, pressing the space bar on your keyboard and cycling through all the various items. You can also scrub on a stack like this with your mouse and get nice little previews of every item within the stack. Bottom line, if you've always struggled to keep your desktop looking tidy, then stacks can go a long way towards keeping it nice and clean. When setting up your Mac for the first time, you definitely want to customize your Safari start page, which is a new feature in Mac OS Big Sur. So when opening a new Safari window with the start page displaying, you can click the settings button in the bottom right hand corner and customize the start page to your liking. So every time you open up a new window, this is the view that you're going to see. So you can eliminate everything. If you just want to display your favorites, you can do that. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to use a background image. So I'll just select one of these images here. How about that one? You can also add your own custom image if you want to do that. You can even use the wallpaper from Mac OS, use that as a background. So this customized start page is what you'll see every time you open up a new window in Safari on your Mac. Now I also recommend enabling the Safari status bar. I'm going to open up one of my favorite websites, of course, Electrek. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to the view menu and select show status bar. You see that status bar is on. So now whenever I hover over a link, you're going to see a preview of that link. You're going to see the URL in the status bar, which helps you to know where you're going to go upon clicking that link. So obviously it goes without saying a very useful feature, something I think Apple should have enabled by default. And I also recommend enabling the develop menu bar in Safari. And the reason why I recommend that is because that allows you to view page source so you can view the code behind a website, which can be useful in some instances, especially if you're a power user. So go up to Safari, go to preferences, go to advanced, and then enable show develop menu in menu bar. So like it says, it will place a new develop menu in the menu bar, which contains all sorts of goodies. But what I particularly like is just the ability to right click and select inspect element with that option enabled, which allows you to get directly to the page source option. Now Yoink is a $7.99 app on the Mac app store, and it is definitely one of the first things that I add to my Mac upon a new install or upon setting up a brand new Mac. It improves drag and drop on your Mac by basically working like a, a temporary shelf to hold files. And then that allows you to easily move those files around on your Mac. I'll just briefly demonstrate one example uh, of how this can be useful. So right now I'm going to configure it. I like to have it on the right edge center. And then I like to go into preferences, launch Yoink at login, uncheck the menu bar icon. So what Yoink will do is whenever you drag anything on your Mac, any sort of file, you're going to see Yoink appear wherever you configure it to appear, in this case on the right center. And that works as sort of like a temporary shelf to hold files. So I can use that, just drag an additional file over here. So you can see those two files, those two screenshots. And then I can move anywhere else on my Mac. I can open up a folder, move to a different desktop even. And you see those files are waiting there, waiting to be moved to another destination. So I can move that screenshot, I can remove that one. It just makes using your Mac so much more seamless and simple. 
Now, earlier in our video, I talked about Spotlight and the fact that I don't really use Spotlight at all on the Mac. Instead, I use a ridiculously handy utility called Alfred. And because I'm using it as a Spotlight replacement, what I'm going to do first is go into System Preferences, Keyboard, Shortcuts, and Spotlight and disable the spotlight shortcut, command space, because I'm going to assign that to Alfred. And what Alfred basically is, it's a launcher. It is a workflow utility. You can see my hotkey, I assigned it to command space. Now the downside is that to really get the most out of Alfred, you have to have the power pack, which is a $40 upgrade. I actually bought a lifetime license because I just use it that much. But as you can see, what Alfred allows you to do among many things is to create a custom web search. So I've created a couple of custom searches for nine to five Mac. I'll show you an example of one of those in a second. You can also save your clipboard history and quickly access that. There are other apps that can do that as well, but this is like an all in one, like mega utility. And then you have snippets. So auto expanding snippets, you can have that as well. Alfred just does so many different things. So here is Alfred. I'm using the number nine for my custom search and I can just quickly search nine to five Mac right from this launcher slash spotlight replacement. And there you go. There is my custom search for nine to five Mac. Super simple, super easy. That's just one of the many things that Alfred does. So I, I know it sounds like they're sponsoring this, but no, it's just something I've been using for so many years. And it's one of the first apps or utilities that I install on my Mac. Now I also love being able to access my clipboard history so I can go back and find something that I copied earlier in the day and easily access that and paste it. It makes life so much easier. I also love the auto expanding snippets so I can quickly auto expand, for instance, a right arrow, just like that. Uh, Basically, this app is just like tons of different utilities in one. Now let's talk about the dock, customizing the dock. One of the first things that I do is disable the recent applications section in the dock, which is something that I find personally annoying. Uh, so what you can do is go into system preferences, go to dock and menu bar, and then simply uncheck where it says show recent applications in dock. So here are the recent applications. They are to the right of all of your normal applications. And uh, when I close these out, they remain in the dock, as you can see here. But if I disable show recent applications, those items will disappear. So let's go ahead and uncheck. And you can see they're gone. So I personally like that because I like to control what's in my dock. Just get rid of those recent applications, makes it super simple. And when setting up your Mac for the first time, you should also definitely customize what's in the dock. That for me involves getting rid of a lot of the applications that are there by default. So to get rid of these apps, you simply drag up, hold, and then let go when you see remove, just like that. So I'm gonna go in here and really start trimming the fat and even get rid of Launchpad because we have that assigned to a hot corner, remember that? So now I have my dock cut down and curate it just to show the applications that I actually use. And then from there, you can go ahead and put applications that you regularly use in the docs. So in this case, of course, Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and we're gonna make sure it stays in the dock. So to do that, you right click on the app icon, go to options and make sure you select keep in dock, just like that. So that will keep it in the dock. Now here's another way you can keep an app in the dock. You simply drag it to move it and customize its place in the dock or its position in the dock, and that will automatically enable keep in dock. So you wanna do that for all the applications that you use on a regular basis. Now, I also recommend resizing the dock based on how many apps you have in the dock, based on just your setup, of course, your display size. So simply drag on the vertical line that appears in the dock to make it larger or make it smaller. You can also do so from system preferences, menu bar and dock. Another thing that you may wish to do when setting up your Mac is to move the dock position on screen. So to do so, go to system preferences, go to dock and menu bar, and then you'll see position on screen. So you can choose to put the dock on the left side or place the dock on the right side. I personally would prefer it on the left. I like using the dock on the left hand side because you have more horizontal real estate than vertical real estate where the dock is by default. But of course, that's gonna be up to you. I, I kind of switch back and forth between 
placing the dock on the left hand side or just keeping it at the bottom of the screen like it is by default. Now another thing I definitely recommend you consider is to enable the automatically hide and show dock option. So when I check that, notice the dock disappears and it only reappears when you place your mouse cursor down near where the dock resides. Just like that. It's a great feature for keeping your desktop nice and clean. Now, another thing you may want to consider is to automatically hide and show the menu bar. So if you hide and show your dock, you can do the same thing for the menu bar at the top of the screen under dock and menu bar settings in system preferences, just enable automatically hide and show menu bar. And now you get a super clean setup because you've hidden both your menu bar and your dock and you reveal those whenever you place your mouse cursor wherever your dock resides and at the top of the screen where your menu bar resides. So ladies and gents, that has been my look at over 30 of my favorite Mac getting started tips. Let me know, were there any tips that you didn't know about that you plan to use in the future when setting up your new Mac? Let me know down below in the comments section and thumbs up if you appreciated this video. Also, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Stay tuned for more Mac content. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. 9to5Mac is sponsored by AirBuddy 2, a must-have utility for AirPods users. As we discuss, AirBuddy 2 is the perfect companion for AirPods. It also extends macOS with the batteries widget and menu bar icon that shows all your devices intelligently grouped. And smart stats give you battery usage over time, total listening time, call time, and shows you which AirPod is draining its battery more quickly. But AirBuddy goes beyond headphones. It can show battery information for your iOS devices, accessories like the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse, and even other Macs running AirBuddy, including their accessories. And with the Magic Handoff, you can transfer a Magic Mouse trackpad or keyboard between two Macs running AirBuddy with just a few clicks. Go to airbuddy.app slash 9to5Mac to learn more. The first 100 9to5Mac viewers to use that URL will get AirBuddy with a 20% discount. Special thanks to AirBuddy 2 for sponsoring 9to5Mac.